to work together through and not go backwards and let that anger take over us. And we need to look forward, take a look on the streets, and look around, see all the colors, all the beautiful colors all around us, all these people all together, all these people standing up for each other, coming together. What a beautiful thing. I've seen so many changes, so many beautiful changes in my lifetime. And let me tell you what, I've seen some pretty ugly coming from all different directions. People think it might just be coming from one direction. Nope, nope. We all have to come together as one people, one people. All right, children in Halloween. No, we should not be in Halloween, but we have to do this smart. And we do not get to put the pandemic aside for Halloween. Two sides, you gotta remember that somebody has to open the door for those children and give them candy. You're gonna go trick or treating. So those people need to be okay with a bunch of little kids and a bunch of little hands and a bunch of little air and screaming and hollering and all excited trick or treat. You gotta remember those people have to be okay with it too. So respect everyone and respect everyone's lives and realize that they're important too because this pandemic, it's, it's pretty bad, but we can get through it. But we have to recognize that all lives matter. All colors, all ages, all sizes. You just have to, okay? So give those little ones a choice. And let's use some love and logic along with that science. You give them an option, you tell them, okay, little Henry, you can either go trick or treating, and you're gonna have to put a real mask with your Halloween mask and a face shield or we just aren't going to go trick-or-treating. We will have to follow your mama's directions if you want to go trick-or-treating. Okay. If they choose that they will do it, you even have, you can be real creative. You could have them actually decorate with non-toxic on a mask on the first front layer to go with their costume and then put it over another mask. It's too bad we don't have N95 yet for everyone to keep us real safe and you need to protect your eyes. And then they do have face shields and children's sizes. And I'm telling you what, they decide. Open up these schools and parents decide to send their kids to school before we have a vaccine that has efficacy. They need to do a lot more than just requiring a mask for these little kids to keep on when adults don't even wear them right, don't even keep them on, and nose always sticking out of them, or they lower it to talk, they're always touching, but yet you expect five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve on up, do the right thing? Come on now, people. We we'll have to do a lot more than that, though. Some states are getting a lot smarter now, and they're giving their teachers medical grade, you know, those, those N95 masks and surgical masks that actually been approved by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, or the FDA didn't think an elderly woman's paying attention, did you? But I am. You need to get a real mask onto those kids so they don't take that virus on home to their families and their communities. You can't just look at those kids. You gotta look at everybody, and that's the same thing that goes for Halloween. So, if you wanna choose to do things normal, normal things we used to do before the virus, you got to make it as safe as, as safe as possible. And if you can't make it safe enough, then it just doesn't happen. Okay, so if you decide that you're going to do this, what you should do is, first of all, make sure they're going in a safe neighborhood. It would even be best if it's your neighbors and you know them and you contact them and maybe you can plan ahead of time which neighbors are actually okay with this and get them to agree that they too will wear a face shield and a mask. Clean hands. And Mom and Dad, you need to make sure that you have some backup candy and treats, some healthy stuff at home and ready because when those little kids come home with those dirty little hands that you're going to make sure they wash up real nice and change their clothes, they're going to be ready to eat those treats. And you know what? You need those to sit when you're disinfecting those packages, spray them down, wipe them down. So have something ready for them, okay? Always make sure you go through and take out anything that shouldn't be in there, too doesn't look safe or isn't healthy enough, all right? You know, it's a special occasion. So another thing you could do, I'm giving them a choice, because you know, when you narrow things down to two choices with children, you let them feel like they're making a choice and independent, but you've narrowed down those choices to the best choices for your children, okay? So maybe you give them a couple options in addition to Halloween, trick-or-treating, you can do this or this. 
or ask them if there's something they'd rather do that maybe you're willing to do. But I'm gonna tell you something that I used to do with my kids. If my kids couldn't digest sugar properly. So what we did was we had a costume party, but you can't even imagine that. But my husband and I, we would dress up in really fun things or scary things along with our children and just have a good old time and have backup costumes they could change during the night if they wanted to. We'd have pizza and we'd have some healthy snacks and they just had a blast. So, oh my word, everyone's just acting like kids just can't be resilient and that it's the end of the world if they don't have everything that they're used to. And if we just take all this energy that we're spending on fighting everybody for personal gains and political persuasion and put it into what we need to do as a country, we would have a lot happier families and lives and a lot more progress. Our children would be doing so well, focused on their education now, on this distance learning now. I don't think this elderly woman here has no clue. I understand that, unfortunately, there are real problems for people out there with distance learning. You know, parents that just have to go to work and they don't have anyone to take care of the kids. And I really do feel that this government needs to step up and give them some options. But you got to keep those people safe. you got to keep those kids safe just because they can. Don't have anyone to watch their kids don't mean you don't keep them safe. You still have to keep them safe. You gotta give them the right kind of PPE. And you have to think about the people taking care of those kids at the same time. We gotta get computers to those kids. We gotta get Wi-Fi or we're gonna have to find some type of location. You know, the real bright lady here in California had a good idea. And she first mentioned about kind of like a study hall for kids at a school that they didn't have any options at home, didn't have computers or Wi-Fi. And you know, I do think maybe that if we got some people some real good PPE to run those study halls and we had real strict measures and, and we could really do really good physical distancing and face shields along with those masks and no exceptions and well I, I think if that's the only option that that's what we need to consider but but I don't think we should be pushing everybody to go back to school just because someone's trying to make someone win the election and, they're willing to risk other people's lives. How is that okay? That's certainly not okay. You know, I actually heard, I was watching the news, I used to watch Fox 11 News, special often, and I actually enjoyed it. And now, I just see so much downplaying of this virus, with this doctor on there, shoot down every good idea that would help people. And every single time he's gotta make sure he pushes it up particular way, and I'm not going to say, but a particular way for personal gains and per political persuasion. I just don't think that that's right for a doctor to do. So, while well, everybody wants to point their fingers just at President Trump, people need to start paying attention to a lot of other people out there trying to downplay this virus, make it go certain ways, and we have to care about everyone. Election or no election, lives actually matter. They sure do. Alex Michelson actually brought up a really good idea. Now, I know I'm talking about Halloween here, but this is real important on children, and we're going to move along on to voting, okay? He brought up a really good idea about those round faucets and all the schools. There's these round doorknobs that force these little children to touch these faucets. Actually, they're in a lot of bathrooms everywhere. Dirty little hands, touching the locks, touching the doors, but those nasty faucets. And remember, they did say that COVID-19 is actually detected in feces five days before you actually test positive. So, you think about that in the bathroom, all these dirty little hands, turning on those faucets, turning them back off after they wash their hands. And you know what that doctor actually said when he shot down the Alex Lamont news station? He actually said only clean hands touch the faucet. I wish that Alex would have asked him, what planet are you from? Man and doctor, you should certainly know. It's not just clean hands touching those faucets. I don't know who washes hands with dry soap and no water. So once again, gotta shoot everything down so we can try to shove those kids back into school so we can push that vote the way we want, huh? Even as a doctor, let me tell you what, 
women have only been allowed to vote for the last 100 years. I cannot believe that we would have anyone in this country trying to prevent anyone from voting. I don't care who you are, what color you are, how old you are. Don't let anyone take away your right to vote. But do not put your safety at risk to vote. President or no president, no one should try to purposely prevent you from voting or to put you in harm's way to get you to vote in person during a pandemic when we are not allowed to have access to N95 masks or medical grade surgical masks and the pertinent information has not been given in a calmly manner to this country on how to stay safe. No one should do that to anyone. So I wanna tell you how important it is that you make sure that you vote ahead of time or vote on time and you need to get that ballot in. Do not waste your vote. This is your opportunity to make your opinion. This is your future and you have a right to vote on who you want as your leader whether it is President Trump or whether it is former Vice President Joe Biden. Mr. President, what I would like to ask you to do is to lead this country to safety while still doing this election. And it is great that you still want to be our president, but I'm asking you to please remember that this entire country, you are the president for this entire country and we all matter. I hope that you will do the best that you can to make sure that all of these people can stay safe if for some reason they have to vote in person. Now I have seen it on the television and it does not look like people are truly preparing for the real COVID-19 that is out there that could take anyone's life. And that risk should not be put on these people. So I'm asking you to do everything in your power not to block people from doing mail-in voting. If it's true that you spent $66 million in 2016 for your election, for your campaign, then even if it means you help out, however, to make sure that the votes are tallied properly, get security, make sure you have someone on both sides for every single part of this process so that you can be happy and content no matter what the outcome is. And we need to remember right now that you are still our president. And that means you are the president of the Democrats and the Republics and the Independents. I hope that you will not forget about the people in the cities with all the problems right now needing your help just because maybe there's more Democrats than Republicans or more Democrats than the Independents and the Republicans because you are everybody's president your presidency is not over during this election. You're still our president, and we need a plan. So let's get this mail-in voting in gear. And even if people do have to vote in person, let's step up this game and keep them safe. There's no reason you can't have like a thermal entrance to go through outside. And then maybe the next stage is like the other countries when they have a sanitizer that you walk through like you're at an airport, sanitize you safely. And maybe you have a hand sanitizing station. And then maybe you have a bag ready for them with an N95 mask and a face shield. And we have more than six feet physical distancing because all the studies have proven six feet isn't enough. Well, you know that isn't enough. When you say this virus is deadly and it's in the air and it's affecting everybody, not just the elderly, it's affecting the young too, we need to do this right. If we're not going to have consequences for the crimes out there and for all the people throwing the parties and stuff and the COVID-19 parties, we're not going to do all the stuff we need to to keep people safe. We're going to need to get some N95 masks to everybody that's willing and wanting to keep themselves safe. And I think there's been enough time, so let's do this the right way, Mr. President Trump. I'd really appreciate it. I'd like to see 
these numbers go down and I'd like to see this get to zero and I'd like to kick this virus in the tail. We gotta do this together. We gotta stop this virus. We gotta stop this line. We gotta stop this nonsense, everybody. We gotta pull it together. Way back in April started this project for this country. My granddaughter, she has a patent pending contact tracing device that could actually be used universally she sent the information to every single governor in this United States. She sent it to the White House. She sent it to candidates for this presidential campaign. She sent it to so many people. You just have no idea. She sent it to the CDC. She sent it to the mayor. She sent it to public health directors. And you know what? She also does these t-shirts and for spreading positivity that she started back in March when she was telling everybody to wear a mask. Face shield, protect the eyes, and wash your hands for 20 plus seconds. So she worked real hard and she filed this with patent lawyers on June 5th, something that could help this world without risking your cell phone. It could actually, in real time, do contract tracing and notify you anonymously if you've been exposed and for priority testing with no discrimination. Also to notify you if you have tested positive. Medical contact tracing device. It's really pretty cool. I know she already has a YouTube showing a little bit of it, but not the full thing. I hope she gets it out there so so maybe this country could see and maybe this country could see that no one's done anything about it. But let me tell you about the few people that have. Because also people aren't thinking about what's gonna happen when the vaccine is out. What are we going to do when only part of this country gets the vaccine and then we still have everybody fighting and the hate going around, wondering who should have a mask on and who shouldn't have a mask on? Has anybody thought about a passport? Has anybody thought about what could we have as an alternative to a cell phone so we don't risk our privacy, but also something visible so we can stop this hate? So we could actually have comfort if we want to go to a hair salon and have somebody do our hair even though we're wearing masks. We would know if that person Wristband is pandemic wristband, that's right. It's real clever. It actually looks pretty smooth too. We'd actually be able to see if it's flashing. If somebody needs to get priority testing, they've been exposed. And the people running the salon would know if their customers need to get tested. If people are positive, they would know that they need to stay quarantined for that two weeks. And everybody could keep each other real safe and everybody could keep each other real calm. Now, in case you're thinking that this is crazy and no one would ever do it, well, let me tell you what. The NFL, they're already starting to use some, some tractors and uh, sewing it into their garments for physical distancing and they know where they've been and their, their families, but this is actually much easier and you know what? Kind of need everybody to do it so that you could really feel safe and secure with the results of it, don't you think? Yep, and then you know what? You get that vaccine with efficacy and then this light can be green and you have a passport to get in anywhere with no one questioning you, with no one wondering, and if they have to keep things at 25%, well, they wouldn't have to worry about you if you have a green passport on your pa on your wristband, would they? Elon Musk can come up with a brain chip and a monkey to control a computer. I think it'd be pretty simple being that Apple and Google already have the software for a cell phone. It'd be real easy for them to just use that census, send everybody that wristband, and you, you have your own ID number, you go online, you only put in the information that you want to put in, optional emergency information, in case of a catastrophe or unresponsive, or, or to use it as a passport. This could be really a great national plan, a real global plan for everyone. And I hope she gets it up real soon. But anyway, she sent it to Robert Redfield, to CDC, and you know what? They actually emailed her and told her they reviewed it and told her where to submit it. Governor Cuomo, he actually had his, his office email my granddaughter and thank her and told her where to submit that information to for New York. And Dr. Barbara Ferrer, she actually wrote a, wrote a letter to my granddaughter thanking her and discussing her large scale contact tracing. I know Bahrain, they have tracking bracelets just to make sure that people that are testing positive stay quarantined in the house, but this does a lot more. And this wouldn't risk anybody's privacy and wouldn't discriminate. Doesn't care how old you are, what color you are. If you've been exposed, you get priority testing. If you, stay, if you test positive, you're gonna be notified. 
If you get that vaccine, and you have immunity, you're going to have a passport. You need to start thinking, of, thinking ahead of time because I believe in Dr. Fauci and I believe in the scientists trying to help us. You need to stop listening to those rare few doctors on TV trying to get you not to listen to the scientists. Some of those still saying it's a hoax, which is absolutely, absolutely just negligence, just ridiculous. We gotta stop this nonsense. We gotta think about people's lives at the same time we're thinking about an election. We have to think about people's lives with the, with the COVID-19 at the same time people are losing their homes to fires and hurricanes. We don't put it aside and now start thinking of the next thing just like we need to think about this COVID-19 while there are people out there on the street, street protesting. We need to keep the protesters safe. We need to keep the police protecting the protesters safe. People need to wear the right kind of masks and they need to realize that they need at least three plus layer masks, plus a face shield, plus protect their eyes. And is anyone listening to the fact they said, don't wear gaiters anymore, don't wear bandanas anymore, they're just not good enough. And you need a mask that stays on your face. Your nose and your mouth has to stay covered. When you talk, you can't pull it down to talk while you're protesting. Come on, kids, we gotta get this right. When you see people on TV acting like they're being all kind, letting parties continue, maybe they're doing this for one color, maybe they're not doing it for another color. It isn't love, it isn't protecting. We gotta protect everyone. And we have to protect the people even throwing these parties. I don't care what color they are. You have to get them to stop. You gotta protect them. You gotta protect the families. Maybe they're going off of that downplaying the virus. Maybe they're going off of those lies. Anyway, I just know that everybody needs to be coming together as one people. It's what we have to do. And I'm gonna let my granddaughter tell you some more because I know she really wants to help y'all in the way she can. You know what, I, I gotta get this eyelash off my face, gotta get this glue, I just can't stand this anymore, but I thank y'all for listening. I want you to have a happy Halloween, just be smart out there and don't get, have those kiddos brush their teeth and floss after they eat that candy, not too much, get that obesity right down right now. Don't be getting any cavities right now either, because it's, you know, not the same getting to go to dentist. Also, I want you to stay safe when you're voting. Don't let anybody tell you who to vote for, okay? Don't put yourself in harm's way. Let's step up the safety if somebody has to vote in person. All right, now. You take care. Stay safe, America.